how do we produce energy for our life you know that we are producing energy from our food we are eating so the food we are eating is converted to energy for our daily life needs today we are discussing this very very important topic welcome to dr ashish conceptuals here so this is a very very interesting topic how do we produce energy from our food you know that our food contains carbohydrates proteins and fats so what will happen to these food particles that will be getting digested fast you know that when the carbohydrate is getting digested it will be producing sugars basically the glucose it is produced and proteins are digested that will be producing amino acids and when the fats are digested that will be producing fatty acids there these are the basics i know that everybody must be knowing and these things later converted into energy and today we will be discussing the details of that energy production from the substrates there you know that sugar is the primary substrate for the energy production and the amino acids and the fatty acids are secondary substrates so let's see what will happen for seeing that thing we have to see the basic structure of the cell and the energy production unit of the cell so this is the cell and i am going to draw the energy production unit of the cell that is known as the powerhouse of the cell you may be knowing which is the organelle i am talking about i am talking about the mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell so this is the cytoplasm of the cell and inside that the mitochondria the cytoplasm as well as the mitochondria is involved in the energy production let's see how these parts are involved there so there is a cytoplasm and mitochondrial reactions are there Cyto cytoplasmic reactions and mitochondrial reactions are there let's see what will happen there in the cytoplasm our primary energy substrate the glucose is coming and the glucose molecule is undergoing a series of chemical changes that is collectively known as the process of glycolysis you know what the meaning of the word lysis lysis means breaking down and glyco indicates the glucose so the total meaning will be coming as glucose breakdown as a part of at the end of this breakdown of the glucose there is a molecule of pyruvic acid is produced a molecule pyruvic acid is produced and that process it is known as glycolysis glycolysis produces pyruvic acid that is happening in the cytoplasm of the cell and later the pyruvic acid is uh, transported to that mitochondria and inside the mitochondria the pyruvic acid is converted to a different molecule here that molecule is known as acetyl coenzyme a acetyl coenzyme a and later the acetyl coenzyme a is going for a cyclical reaction different different reaction repeatedly coming in a cycle and this cycle of reaction here will be calling it as krebs cycle that is known as krebs cycle so why these uh, reactions are occurring and what is the purpose of this thing and how we are producing energy from this reaction that's our discussion topic here today so you have to know that after the glycolysis there is a sub molecule is produced that is known as nadph the same nadph is produced in when the pyruvic acid is converted into acetyl coenzyme a and in the krebs cycle in the krebs cycle one additional molecule fadh is also produced so what is this nadh and fadh they are the intermediates or i'll be calling them as energy intermediates they are known as what energy intermediates of the cell they are produced in krebs cycle and glycolysis so the function of glycolysis and krebs cycle are production of nadh nadh and fadh or so called energy intermediates so the function of glycolysis and pyruvic acids are to produce that nadh and fadh so let's see what will happen to that nadh and fadh later on and the other thing we have to discuss here if the cell you know that the primary energy source is glucose for any cell suppose if the cell is lacking the glucose there what the cell will do there is no glucose in the cell at that time the cell will depends upon the other molecules like fats there the fat molecule is converted into directly into acetyl coenzyme a we shall discuss later on the details of that thing and the other even if there is a also the fat is also not present there what will happen the cell will depends upon the third molecule the proteins are there what will happen to the protein the protein some of the amino acids will be converted directly into the glucose and some other amino acids will be going into that acetyl coenzyme a let's see the details later in another video here so here what will happen 
you can see that this is an NCRT figure. You can see the carbohydrate, the primary source, is converted into glucose by digestion. And after that, that will be converted into pyruvic acid. The process is known as glycolysis. We already discussed. And the two other secondary energy sources, the fats and proteins. The fats will be converted into fatty acid. The later it will be converted into acetyl coenzyme A. And the amino acid, I told you, that can convert into glucose and that will be forming the pyruvic acid and the other one fat that will be going into acetyl coenzyme A. Let's see the details in the future upcoming videos of my series here. So the question is how do we produce energy for our life? You know that that was the thing we were discussing here and we found out that we will be producing NADH and FADH for the energy production here. So how the NADH and FADH produce? Again I'll be telling like they are produced from actually there are four sources for them. What is the first source? Uh, the first source is your glycolysis. First source is your glycolysis. Second one is the Krebs cycle. And third one is the fat utilization and the protein utilization there. So that is the source of NADH and FADH2. And how the NADH and FADH2 convert into energy? Let's see the detail. Before that, don't forget to subscribe this channel for the future videos like this. Let's subscribe there. So let's regain our discussion here so how the nadh and fadh2 is converted into cell for that thing i am drawing the cell again our powerhouse again so this is a cell the powerhouse that is the mitochondria here let's discuss the structure of the mitochondria briefly then we'll go for that nadh and fadh mitochondria is a double membrane structure that will be having an outer membrane here the outermost membrane is known as outer membrane of mitochondria the inner one is inner membrane of the mitochondria there you can see that and the innermost portion of that mitochondria inside the inner membrane it is known as matrix mitochondrial matrix there and you can see there is a space between the inner membrane and outer membrane there that space in between the two membranes that is known as intermembranous space it is known as intermembranous space because it is in present in between Two membranes of the mitochondria and why we are discussing these things let's see that thing before that i want to magnify that uh, matrix and intermembrane space for you so i'll sh let's uh, redraw that again so that is the small image for our reference there so what i'm drawing now is the innermost membrane and uh, you can see this is the matrix and the membrane I have drawn outside that is the inner mitochondrial membrane. I will mark it as IMM, inner mitochondrial membrane. And outside the inner mitochondrial membrane, there will be the outer mitochondrial membrane will be there. And you can see there is a space between the two. That space is known as intermembranous space. It is known as intermembranous space. We already discussed that thing. And what is the importance? You have to know that our NADH and FADH, our NADH and FADH will be coming into the matrix first. And in the matrix, they will be getting oxidized into NAD and H+, FAD and H+. Removal of hydrogen is known as oxidation. What will happen to the hydrogen ions? Uh, that is a thing here. The hydrogen ions in the matrix, they will be taken up by some special structure which is present on the inner mitochondrial membrane, which I am drawing it now. So what is that thing? This special structure are they are special pumps. They are special pumps for that hydrogen ion. What these pumps will be doing? These pumps will be taking upon the hydrogen ion or proton and that will pump into the intermembrane space. That will they will pump that hydrogen ion into the intermembrane space. So as the pumping is going on, what will happen? There is more and more hydrogen ions are coming into the intermembrane space. And what will happen there? Uh, we shall see the concentration of that hydrogen ion. The concentration of the hydrogen ion will be very high in the intermembrane space. High concentration of H plus ion in the intermembrane space will be generated. Let's uh, compare this thing to a very familiar thing that is your hydroelectric power plant. I know that everybody know the details of the thing. Here we will be storing the water in a dam there. You know that how we will be producing electricity and the water from the dam is going through a tunnel here and it will be going to the powerhouse which is containing the generator there what will happen let's see the generator in closely we can see that that a pipe water containing pipe that will be carrying the water downwards very forcefully and that water will be hitting on a wheel there that is known as turbine there 
and the turbine will rotate and the rotation of the turbine will help the generator to produce the energy there you know that thing the same thing is happening in the cell you can see that here in the power plant there is a water is moving the kinetic energy of the water is utilized and the kinetic energy of the water is converted into electrical energy in a power plant there you know that thing same thing is happening in your cell there let's discuss that in detail you can see we will be having a dam first we will be having a dam of water for electricity production there and we will be having a huge tank to fill this water there from the dam you know that so what i am drawn is a tank here and there will be a pump will be there what the pump will be doing the pump will be pumping the water into the tank so you can see that the tank is getting filled with water i am drawing the water which is filling in the drain and there will be a pipe will be going downwards from the tank which is carrying the water and it will be falling on a turbine a wheel there a rotating wheel it will be falling there you know that the water will be falling down through that pipe there falling on the turbine the turbine will rotate this rotation will be helping this rotation of the turbine will be helping to produce energy and how we can relate into the cell there you can see that we are having a dam and we are having a water what is the dam we are having that is the mitochondrial matrix and the water we are having is the h plus ions so, and what will happen the pumps i shown you earlier the pumps will pump the hydrogen ions into the tank or the intermembranous space the tank represents the intermembranous space so the h plus ions are getting filled you can see that h plus ions are getting filled inside your intermembranous space the h plus ion so you can see that the outside is the matrix and the tank is the intermembranous space so you can see that in the tank there is high concentration of h plus and in the matrix low concentration so the h plus ions will flow down it will fall on the wheel like structure so what will happen the wheel will rotate and energy will be produced so what will happen the adp will be coming adp means a adenosine and two phosphate molecule you can see adenosine plus two phosphate again one phosphate molecule is coming here what will happen this this energy is used to produce adenosine triphosphate or your atp so you can see that that third bond is a high energy bond that is made from this structure here and you i already compared the dam and water here the pump what is the pump the pump is known as electron transport chain this is the electron transport chain you are having so what is the function of the electron transport chain electron transport chain how to maintain the high concentration of the h plus ion in the intermembrane space and low concentration in the matrix then only the hydrogen ions will be falling like that the phosphate molecule is adding here the addition of the phosphate molecule to the adp will be calling it as phosphorylation addition of the phosphate molecule is known as phosphorylation that is a technique here and this channel and the rotatory thing what is the channel and the rotatory thing that is to produce the atp there so we'll call that as an enzyme they are known as atp synthase that is a very big enzyme so we'll be calling them as atp synthase complex the channel and the rotatory thing is known as atp synthase enzyme complex so let's uh, summarize all these things here let's summarize all these thing here so you have to know that we will be first doing glycolysis breaking down of the glucose the cyclical thing that is a krebs cycle and we'll be utilizing the fat oxidation protein utilization everything is there and everything will produce your nadh and fadh2 what is these things they are the energy intermediates they are the energy intermediates will be produced and these energy intermediates will give h plus ion the h plus ions are pumped by electron transport chain so that will be creating an osmolar gradient across the inner membrane and outer membrane and that will be used for phosphorylation or addition of that thing so in this video series i am going to present you i'll be discussing all these topic first one will be glycolysis then the krebs cycle then the fat oxidation then the protein utilization then the electron transport chain and phosphorylation these topics will be presented to you soon by the upcoming videos so st stay tuned for me stay tuned for the upcoming videos and i would like to get your feedbacks as comments below there you know that below there is a comment box and whatever you want to talk to me just communicate there and here is dr ashik with you i'm saying you thank you and thank you for watching me and once again don't forget to subscribe and whatever may be the comment whatever may be your critic reviews just come with me that below the comment box is ready and it is open for you thank you thank you thank you once again and